Hello and welcome to the Winter Circle. I'm your host, Dr. Sean. As you're aware, on the Winter Circle, we like to take on concerns of the day. Uh, when we say concerns, usually what we're talking about are problems. We like to diagnose problems, talk about how we can uh, define them, how we can ultimately prevent them. But the Winter Circle is not just about problems. It's about finding and creating ways that we can experience and enjoy Victoria's health. It's about winning. Today, to help us do all that, we have our guest, Dr. Elokik Alok Basin. Yes. And he is not only a mental health professional, he's a psychiatrist. Yes. Dr. Basin, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's great to have you. Good to be here. <laughs> so one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, one of the concerns, one of the problems, is that, you know, I'm stressed out. And the people that I'm around are stressed out too. My kids are stressed out. People I work around are stressed out. I really want to dig into that. But before we dig in, I just wanted to understand a little bit more about yourself. If you could explain, um, what, what is it like to be um, a shrink? Does that, is that title, uh, how does that uh, title come off? Well, I think the title shrink first. <laughs> I think it's a Hollywood term. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sure if it's, um, like it came from like head shrinker. Okay. You know, so, but that kind of, that, so the shrink kind of style isn't what we really do right now. Okay. Yeah, it's more along the lines, what we call it the shrink we see on, on TV, mm -hmm. and they have the person on the couch mm -hmm. usually looking the other way, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, just talking. Okay. And that's your, you would say that's the actual, like, psychoanalytic, psychodynamic style. Got it. Whereas in the hospital and in the outpatient services and everything we do now mm -hmm. is more all right, what's happening right now, what's mm, happening today, sure. in the past few days, what are your acute issues, problems, the mm. things we call stress, Yes. and how we can deal with those. Mm. So part therapy, part medication, and that way. Got it, so. got it, okay, I appreciate it. So I wanted to understand, you know, right now, these days, we're having a lot of uncertainty, mm -hmm. and there's so many changes going on um, we, we're going into a new season, um, a lot of political changes going on, a lot of uncertainty there. Um, we're having a lot of economic changes associated with a pandemic. Yes. There's so many things going on, and we don't know actually when all of this is going to resolve. We don't know how it's going to resolve. And a lot of us are uncomfortable. Yeah. And not only are we uncomfortable, but some of the things that we're doing to get comfortable and to treat that, that's also causing a problem. Yeah. So <laughs> I really wanted to, I know that's some heavy stuff to talk yeah, about, yeah. you know, but I think that we're going to be able to uh, get informed. We'll be able to help a lot of people and help ourselves in the process. Mm -hmm. Now, are people coming in and saying, Dr. Basin, I'm stressed out? Um, you know, what, what are they complaining about primarily? Main things, especially these days, okay. has to do with, you know, everybody has the big change of their whole routine, their whole schedule, routine. People mm. can't see their loved ones. Mm. They can't do, go to the gym as freely. Mm. They can't even come home and just, you know, go home and straight hug their kids or wife and mm. family members. Mm. Instead, they have to first either quarantine themselves somewhere on the side and sure. then further go on, sure. or just straight up quarantine, depending mm. on the kind of job you are. Mm -hmm. Like right now, we've you know, the only reason I'm allowed to come here is because you're a certain distance away. Sure. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to make sure, you know, everything is on and I'm That's in my right. space suit and all these things. That's right. So uh, that is a big thing. Sure. And, you know, people, they had their resources. They would mm -hmm. go to work. They had mm -hmm. their job. Right. That was such a big part of their routine. Mm -hmm which is now different. People right. who had their resources that they needed to get help with on um, you know, especially mental health patients who had people calling, either calling in or going to their houses to check in on them. Sure. And even home health aides and stuff like that cannot mm. do that anymore. Mm. So that became something they did online recently. So mm. that became a problem. Mm. So, mm. yeah, so a lot of those kind of things. I see. So a lot of the things that we were doing to keep ourselves balanced before, they've all been shaken up. So and now we're in a state of imbalance. I guess you could say, yeah. and that, that's the uncomfortable yeah. part. So now, um, we've described the sense of anxiety. Um, does that mean that most of us are living with a sense of anxiety these days? 
Yeah, yeah. It's higher than normal. Okay. Because, like you said, that balance, that equilibrium, has tilted more towards the other side. Mm. Whereas, there's always we're always actually in a state of anxiety. Sure. It's normal for us to have anxiety. Okay. Yeah, but it becomes abnormal when it becomes, you know, go tilts the other way. Sure. Yeah, because if we didn't have any anxiety at all on a day-to-day -day level, mm -hmm. nobody will do anything. Mm. Gotcha. Maybe, okay. you might think so. Right. Because it's a mechanism where, you know, you generate a response to a certain stimuli where sure. you're like, okay, things have to be a certain way, so in my body or in my mind, I'm feeling these things or thinking these things. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to plan things accordingly so I can do all these things during the day. Sure. So that's where that anxiety is helpful. Okay. But if you see somebody who doesn't have any anxiety or doesn't care about anything, right. then you're like, I don't care. Mm, sure. So, but if now that anxiety becomes a little too much on the complete opposite spectrum where you're constantly thinking about what you got to do during the day, then you don't even end up doing it. Okay. Because now you're just stuck in your anxiety. Sure. Yeah, so it's like, how do you pull it back? I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, that it's normal to have a sense of anxiety. Yeah. But there's a point at which it becomes a problem. Yes. And is that when it becomes more like a, a diagnosis? Yeah, that's when it starts to become, that's when a lot of times you're like, okay, I need to go see the doctor. Okay. Or somebody else starts telling you that, you know, you might need some help. Okay. And that's when it becomes, all right, it's time to see the doctor. It becomes a diagnosis, the mm -hmm. disorder, mm -hmm. when it's affecting your daily functioning. Okay. Yeah, when all those normal things we do, mm. you're just, you know, you don't want to do them. You're constantly in bed or you're constantly doing all these other behaviors to avoid them. Sure. And that definitely is mm -hmm. when you're, you know, over the issue. top. Yeah. Okay. So now, is that called an anxiety disorder or is that called, um, what sort of uh, diagnosis uh, would you put on it? And I also wanted uh -huh. to understand, are there certain criteria that we would use to make the diagnosis of anxiety? Yes. Or you for, would use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anxiety disorder, depression, panic, all these things, they, yeah, you're, like, you know, they come in their own criteria, mm -hmm. and for example, for anxiety, it would be, you know, excessive, you, then you have generalized anxiety, mm -hmm. where it's like excessively worrying or thinking about things, mm -hmm. where, and it's taking over to the point where normally, you know, you can just be like, oh yeah, I'm worried about that, and you move on. But now here, you're constantly worried about every little thing mm -hmm. over the top. Sure. And it's affecting you to the point where, you're not able to go about your daily activities mm. and you're getting stuck there or you're feeling really tired, fatigued, drained out, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. difficulty thinking about other things, mm -hmm. at times getting irritable, upset, mm. angry over short things. Sure. So it's like, it's like you're blowing a fuse in a way. Sure. Yeah. Wow. You're, you're, you know, it's like you put too many electricity electricity mm -hmm. things on in your house and the power trips. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost like that and then you got to go turn it back on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, you mentioned anxiety and depression in the same sentence and I think you said uh, panic disorder. And <clears throat> we tend to think, not we, but I think that before I was practicing medicine, I would think that anxiety was one thing over here and that would be one group of people and depression would be an entirely different group of people. And then we came to understand that there is a little bit of both in, in both. I mean, you would probably say that um, more, more effectively. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'll say it more effectively, but, <laughs> but um, uh, I guess I definitely deal with it more. Sure. Um, so, yeah, it's like, Anxiety and depression, you know, when we talk about it as a primary disorder, mm -hmm. that's when it's, okay, which one is it that is it, okay, excessively you're so much in your thoughts right. that you cannot move on and mm -hmm. it's draining you to the point that you're stuck. That, mm -hmm. and you know, if it's, you're constantly just going round and round and round, sure. and then you're feeling all these physical symptoms and everything, right. 
and you cannot go about your day, you'll start most likely calling that an anxiety disorder mm. because now it's affecting your daily functioning. Sure. Whereas if it's most likely come to a point where the thought part mm -hmm. might not be there as much and it's you know constantly going on and on, right. but it's come to a point where now everything you look at is either dull or perceived as one particular way and right. you've now categorized it as that's just sad or upsetting or terrible yes. and you're just either constantly in bed, mm -hmm. don't want to do anything, constantly drained out, mm -hmm. your mind feels numb, your body feels numb and tired, sure. you've lost interest in all the things you enjoyed. Goodness. Now that's when you're thinking about depression. Right. Okay. And, but most of the time, even if you might have a depressive disorder, yes. when, it, when you're calling it primarily because of depression, yes. you're not able to go about your daily activities. Got it you usually would have some anxiety symptoms right but not necessarily the whole disorder got it yeah so okay. it can interplay okay yeah okay because they both involve thinking sure yeah makes sense i get it you know i'm reminded about some people that i've met over the years in practice and i think about a gentleman who actually had a panic attack while he was on the side of the road he's a construction worker and it became very disabling for him because he was scared of having another panic attack. Yeah. And so he did admit to a lot of anxiety in general. And when we recommended a medication, an antidepressant, he found that to be uh, counterintuitive, you know. Uh -huh. He's like, I don't want to take anything for depression. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he almost saw that as being told that hey, you're weak, you know, uh -huh. here's an antidepressant. Uh, it's going to help you with this anxiety and panic attack. And this caused a problem, although he did well. Uh, yeah, he yeah, was able to go yeah. back to work, mm -hmm. but he wanted to get off as soon as possible. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you must see that on a regular yeah, basis. It's <laughs> the unfortunate part about that is how a lot of the medications are, I guess you can say, worded as well. Sure. And the terminology we're mm. using. The terminology mm. is to categorize things so it's easier for other practitioners and clinicians and everybody to understand. So we're sure. grouping it. Yes. You know, it all started way back first time when it was um, by the army or military. Mm -hmm. You know, they started the, you know, the categorization of the criteria. Yes. So it became a universal thing where other people would understand. Mm -hmm. And because of that, now medications and everything are also categorized that way. Okay. But for example, the medication that you're calling an antidepressant or anti-anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, it's working on certain receptors in your brain, right. which deal with both of those things. Mm. You know, it's dealing mm. with serotonin, yes. which is a lot of your, you know, frontal lobe, if you're getting irritable, upset, anxiety, the sad mood, it helps with those things and that excessive thinking. Sure. Then it's like, you know, so a lot of the antidepressants or with serotonin, which works with anxiety and depression both. Sure. Same with if somebody says antipsychotic. Mm. But the thing is, those have dopamine, mm -hmm. which is your like motivation aspect. Right. But if you get too much of that, you start having hallucinations and odd, bizarre thinking at times because mm. now you're almost like, oh, I feel so good. Yeah, I'm so motivated, sure. but you're over motivated. You're over the top. Oh dear. <laughs> or when it goes under motivated, you're mm. just like listless. Goodness. And you don't want to do anything. You sure. don't want to move. Right. So, same way, I guess it would be better to call it just motivation. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And that same pill also works on anxiety sure, because it sure. also has serotonin effects, the newer ones. Okay. So, yeah, it could be, you know, the medic. That's the part where we need to educate the public and the patients and yeah, people in general about, you know, what it actually means by when we say these medications. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I can appreciate that. And, you know, I think we're going to take a break, but when we come back from the break, I really want to hear a little bit more about these uh, different categories of medications. You mentioned motivation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, because some of the antidepressants we're using for attention and uh -huh. motivation, and we're using them for anxiety and so forth. So when we come back, I'm going to ask you to get more into those a little bit. And then I'm going to ask you the big question for Dr. Basin. And uh, we'll come back after the break and deal with that. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys after this break.
October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. One in eight women will be diagnosed within their lifetime. RVN TV is asking for your support for breast cancer survivors and those currently battling the disease. You can do this by wearing pink ribbons or clothing throughout the month of October. Early detection and treatment is crucial, and we at RVN TV encourage all women to consider undergoing breast clinical exams and mammograms. The fight against breast cancer needs your support. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mark Iorio. I'm one of the hosts here at RVN TV. We're asking every one of our viewers to go out and vote. Only 60% of eligible voters actually get out and vote during the general election. It's your duty, it's your civic duty to do so. Get out and vote. Do your part and vote. Many men and women have sacrificed their lives for your right to vote. Please vote this year. Vote in person, vote by mail, just vote. Every vote counts, so vote. Get your ass up and go vote. Do you hear me? Go vote. Hello again and welcome back to the Winter Circle. I'm your host, Dr. Sean, and we have with us Dr. Alokik Basin. He's been educating us on anxiety because we're all really stressed out these days. And he's helping us to understand more about anxiety, more about depression, more about panic disorder. And before we went away for the break, Dr. Basin, you were giving us an idea, and we talked some about what we do when we're uh, not being treated and when we're not even aware that we mm -hmm. have anxiety and depression. Uh, we're doing some things uh, to treat ourselves. Yeah. Uh, what, what are some of the things that you see uh, that people are doing instead of actually being treated and recognizing that they have, let's say, anxiety and depression? I think one big thing is avoidance. Okay. Yeah. Avoidance by, you know, it's like when you're feeling overwhelmed or exhausted and worrying about one thing and you're like, oh, I have to do that. Mm -hmm. But then you suddenly find yourself, you're cleaning the whole house instead, or you're, you know, just an example. Mm. Or because I find myself doing that, you know, I'll start, like I had to study for the boards mm -hmm. and instead I'm like, you know what? I never clean, but now I'm cleaning. The kitchen is <laughs> amazingly clean. <laughs> or I'm making dinner, which I, so it's like, but I never do that. Sure. And yeah, it's an avoidance behavior. Right. So, so you know, suddenly there's a change. Sure. Where's this change coming from? Right. Yeah. Ah. So that is one thing we can really look at. It okay. doesn't have to be a big change, even little changes. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I can imagine that sometimes we overdo some things, like let's say exercise. Exactly. Yeah. Eat maybe. Yeah. Um, I hear some people saying that uh, they enjoy comfort food. Right, uh, right. You know, for me, mm -hmm. when I smell cinnamon and butter and sugar, you know, <laughs> I have to Shopping. have some, you know, <laughs> shopping. Okay. Yeah. And okay. And then some people will consume uh, perhaps some beverages. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But it's, and it's all too, because you're this one aspect you're feeling down and out mm -hmm. or over anxious. Mm -hmm. And the basis behind all of that is, yes, you're have a certain thought process going on, mm -hmm. right? It's this one cycle of thoughts going, oh, I don't like that. Oh my goodness, I don't want to do that because it makes me scared or worried. Mm -hmm. Or it's almost like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to think about it. Mm -hmm. So suddenly you put it all down sure. and all your actions automatically start doing something else or your thoughts because mm. you're forcing yourself. Sure. So, mm. but the actual issue is still there. Mm. So no matter what you do, mm -hmm. okay, you're like now getting out more cookies to eat from the refrigerator. Yes. Or pouring yourself a beer after coming home from work. Right. Or just like we said, cleaning or yes. all these avoidance behaviors because yes. now instead of thinking about that, you're doing these things automatically and you're having those sometimes even endorphins release or right. even your own body's um, 
you can say you're increasing your serotonin levels as well sure. by these actions mm. in order to counterbalance that almost automatically. Mm. Yeah, something we see also in, you can say, in ADHD kids with sure. their attention deficit. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much because they're constant, that they're just intrinsically hyperactive. It's more along the lines of between, the, in their brain, in their synapse, mm -hmm. between the neurons, mm -hmm. when they have a lack of, you can say, the dopamine, the motivation, and your concentration, being able to fixate on one thing, the norepinephrine. Yes. Right. If they have less of that, now they're automatically doing all these activities, going mm. left, going right, wow. and playing video games and getting all the stimuli. Sure. Because all that stimuli increases it, mm. and that's when they feel relaxed. Mm. So in, in a way, it's it's like you start doing these behaviors to relax yourself. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So if you find yourself doing these other behaviors, something's changed. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Wow. And when you say something's changed, um, are you talking about perhaps there's some thing coming due? You know, you were talking about boards, maybe taxes are coming due. Exactly. Certain bills, certain deadlines and things like that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So then I can imagine that our esteem and our, how we feel about our ability to deal with our challenges mm -hmm. all plays into how we feel, you know, if exactly. we're anxious or yeah. Okay. And like you said, so once you say how deal with challenges and the other thing we define as a challenge. Mm. Because it's a challenge as long as we have decided in our thinking mm -hmm. and thoughts that mm. Oh my God, that is a little too much for me. All oh, right. And I mean, I could look at something and a puzzle. Yes. And in my, if I suddenly have no, or how about this? Just taking out the trash, yes. right? If I wake up in the morning and I've thought about, okay, I have to do A, B, C, and D. Yes. And then I also have to take out this trash. Mm -hmm. But now I'm thinking about, oh my God, which one do I f do first? Right. But the more I think about that and call it a challenge and difficulty for me, yes. the more it becomes a challenge and difficulty versus sure. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do one at a time. Yes. And suddenly that challenge also feels lesser. But it, that's all. It's like, how are we thinking about that thing as a difficulty in itself? Absolutely. As an experience. Absolutely. So it's almost like, what is your relationship to that mm. thought? Mm. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate it. Um, part of how we can deal with it, uh, without medicines per se, mm -hmm. is to reframe even or relabel yeah. uh, some of how we're looking at these problems. Yes, and exactly. Issues, you know, episodes and incidents. You know, yeah. <laughs> if we can see them as challenges, things that are doable. Uh -huh. um, if we have a, a different perspective, you know, they're doable. Yes. Then that brings our anxiety level down, I would think. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the ways, yeah. Sure. Because more, because a lot of times it's like, you think about something and you're thinking about, oh my God, have I locked the home door or not? Yes. And you've left, and then you think about that, then you think about somebody coming into the house or breaking in, mm. but now all of that is not even true. Wow. Now you're just worried about those thoughts and your fear is according to those thoughts. Mm. It's not even true. Wow. Yeah, so one thing is also questioning yourself, is this fear even appropriate? Is sure. it even true? So that changes so many things. And suddenly you're like, yes, yeah, I'm just worried about this thing, which is not even true or happening. It's not even real. The only place it exists is in my mind. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of that going on these days, especially because um, <clears throat> we have a lot of, um, there's a lot of bipolarity uh, in our society, you know. Um, we hear a lot of about, a lot about uh, different people having struggles. Um, there's a lot of um, polarity in our politics. Um, there's a lot of uh, polarity between the uh, people that have a lot <laughs> and the people that, that don't have a lot. I mean, there's a lot of um, we can look at it, some people do, as, as, as duality in a way, you know. Um, I, but I, I can see how that would be uh, difficult and that I can see how that would cause a lot of angst mm -hmm. also. Yeah. You know. And you know, 
um, bipolarity and you're absolutely right and that's one of the biggest things just like how we started in the beginning and we talked about the equilibrium part yes and like and you just mentioned the polarity and, and that's one of the biggest things the moment in our mind we've decided I want things to be a certain way sure that's when the issue starts is mm -hmm. because now you're constantly fighting what you have in front of you mm. and you're not okay with it right but and you the, can't be okay with it. You can case. because now you want it. You're saying my coffee's cold, yes. and you're upset about it. How dare they bring me cold coffee? Yes. And because I need to have warm coffee in the morning, or my day doesn't go good. Oh my goodness. But who said your day won't go go good with warm coffee? Yes. Nobody. Yes. You just decided that for yourself. You created that. You needed that. <laughs> but. So the moment we've decided that things have to be a certain way, oh dear. that's when a lot of times things go awry. But in reality, what if things are not that way? Sure. Is it okay? Will you survive? Wow. You will survive. Most likely, right? Yeah, you yeah, will survive. Most likely. So yeah. is it the actual issue of that or is it just the fear of that? Sure. Yeah. So you're almost worried just about the fear then. Wow. That's one of the ways to look at it. Yes. Um, Wow. Yeah. What about the benefits of, let's say, um, visualization? Do you teach people how to do that? Do you um, uh, train people? Do you believe in it? Uh, is there yeah. a role? Yeah, I definitely feel there's a big role in it, mm -hmm. um, especially because, you know, that's another guidance, another tool mm -hmm. where you can use in, all right, association. The moment you're having those kind of panic or worrying thoughts and mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. associating that with, all right, reminding yourself to, all right, the moment I feel this tightness yes. means, all right, I've always had that when these kind of things happen. Yes. So bring yourself back to reality of right. where I am right now yes. and helping yourself with the visualization mm -hmm. and all these other techniques and tools. Sure. Visualiz visualizations, thoughts, and questioning and all these things yes. to reframe and come back and relax and stuff like that. Excellent, so, excellent. Excellent, mm -hmm. well, I appreciate that. So, well, so here's the big question for Dr. Basim. We hear what you're... Uh, what you prescribe, you know, and how you look at things in a very thoughtful approach. Uh, but uh, you're not always working, I take it. Uh, at some point, you go home at the end of the, end of the day. Uh, how do you keep your own balance? What do, you, what do you practice for yourself to keep yourself in the middle of the road and as functional as possible? Well, I enjoy, um, let's say, one big thing is like meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I definitely try to get in 30 minutes a day. Mm try my best mm -hmm. um, the other would be I enjoy food mm -hmm. but then that's the thing that's the trick part there sure. is if you start enjoying it too much it becomes a stress sure yeah so deciding all righty I'm gonna you gotta enjoy it with yes. just staying there with the food yes because after a while when you don't even realize you're full and you keep eating because you'd like it to be delicious. Yes. Then later you hate yourself for it. Wow. Yeah. So, so a practice of balance and balance. moderation. Yeah, balance, moderation. Wow. And no matter how busy you are and trying to think in the moment that, oh my God, things are not going my way. I'm busy with this, this, this. Yes. Got to take out that five minutes for yourself. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate that. You really helped us a lot. Uh, you've helped me a lot to understand uh, more from a psychiatrist's perspective, somebody who thinks about this all day long. And um, although we are both um, boarded by the same board, really, mm -hmm. the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, it's, you're still the specialist uh, in this arena. I just don't think about it all, do all day long. So thank you for uh, your experience. Thank you for offering it and sharing it with myself as well as the rest of the viewers and the winner's circle. Um, Thank you, guys, thank you guys for joining <clears throat> in the Winter Circle, and we look forward to seeing you back next week, uh, Monday, 2 o'clock p.m., or Tuesday, 6 o'clock p.m., and until then, keep winning. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks for joining.